Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Omega Constellation Globemaster. 39mm in stainless steel and tungsten carbide. You can see and you can purchase this Omega Pi Pan Revival on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. And please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included, high resolution images, and naturally complete pricing details for this blue dot white metal Omega Globemaster. Now on my wrist, 6 and 3rd inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, this timepiece is perfectly sized. It's one for the traditionalists in size and sensibility. In many ways, this is the watch that Omega diehards had been waiting for for the better part of four decades. Since the Griffin Claw 1982 Omega Constellation Manhattan, there had been a clamoring for a revival of the watch that most Omega aficionados associate with the Constellation name, the original 1952 Pi Pan Constellation, and in 2015 at Basel World, Omega finally answered with a regular production Pi Pan. Recall that the 1999 DeVille coaxial debut models also had the Pi Pan, but not the correct case or bezel profile. This watch puts it all together. 39 millimeters across the broad of the case from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. The timepiece is reasonably thin, 13 millimeters thick with a sloped tungsten carbide bezel. It easily slides underneath a formal cuff. Aesthetically, very versatile. In terms of size, likewise, because at only 46.5 millimeters from lug to lug across the wrist, this watch wears well on a broad range of wrists. Even down to about 13 and a half centimeters circumference, I believe a wrist could wear this watch with security, proportion, and style. Now, it does have a nice heft to it, that in part due to the tungsten carbide or hard metal bezel. Omega joins the ranks of watchmakers such as Oris and Breitling that are dabbling in tungsten as a metallic tone alternative to ceramics with a similar level of scratch resistance. It also boasts a resistance to fracturing and chipping, one-upping ceramic in that respect. The watch has a cushion case profile in spite of its round bezel, so it spreads its weight nicely on the wrist, and it's paired with a very substantial dark navy blue bolstered monotone stitch folded edge alligator leather strap. You'll also note the seamless flow, the swell of this strap in profile into the lines of the lugs. I don't think I've ever seen such a seamless transition. This watch was very carefully thought out and very carefully executed. Now you also note the clasp, for those who are familiar with Contemporary Omega, is a familiar piece. Polished and satin finished with the Omega logo. Twin trigger release so it can't simply pop open. This watch has some weight to it, so having the trigger release of the clasp is reassuring. On the inside, there's a minder system such that excess strap is tucked underneath the body of the clasp itself, cleaning up the aesthetic of the watch and obviating the need for minder loops that would otherwise clutter the strap and often wear in advance of the rest of the leather. Now what you'll note is that there's a very integrated look to the watch. The strap is tucked very close to the case. Hardly any daylight shows through. As a result, the watch looks like a continuous unbroken arc across the wrist of leather and metal. It's very handsome. One small downside is that it will fight your wrist a little bit if you do have a very small wrist. If you're that 13 and a half centimeter wrist trying to wear this, you're going to have to buckle it down tight because it does want to flare a little bit. That's the price you pay for having a strap that is very closely tucked to the case flank and somewhat pinned against it. But everything else, quite frankly, is worth buckling this thing down to the very last rung or even making another perforation because this thing is gorgeous. Satin finished on its lug hoods as well as its flanks. You'll note there's a hairline bevel along the edge of the case that flows seamlessly into the lug. Use of polish alongside satin for contrast. There's also the fluting of the tungsten bezel. Incredibly handsome. It gives way to the faceted form of the pie pan dial. Now you can see that to good effect. It is a blue metallic pie pan, but it's not precisely a sunburst. It has more of a matte grain. It doesn't have the explosive reactive characteristics of a sunburst dial. Instead, it reacts with a soft glimmer in the light of my light box and a little bit more of a twinkle, maybe just a little bit of an explosive effect in direct sun, but not the histrionics you get from a sunburst, a true sunburst with a deep grain. This one's designed for subtlety in all presentations. It features polished and faceted applied hour indices. Now, everything here is loomed, so the watch has a sports watch sensibility underneath its formal credentials. 100 meters water resistant, you have that tungsten carbide bezel, a steel case, a very robust sports watch architecture about the caliber 8900 that we're about to see. So put this watch on a textile or rubber strap. It could be your only watch for surf and turf occasions. Whether you're at the golf club or the yacht club, this watch is ready. Now, 
You'll note there is a beautiful balance to the dial, a symmetry about it, and a distinct lack of graphics. So many dials today are overprinted with brand names, logos, text describing features that are needlessly listed almost like a litany. There's none of that here. From the index at 12 to the beautifully integrated and stepped date window at 6 o'clock, this is an excellent effort by Omega. Now turn it over and you can see the Caliber 8900. It's basically an 8500 that's been upgraded to Omega's new Metaz chronometer standard, developed in conjunction with the Swiss government, essentially the Swiss government's version of America's NOAA. The Metaz standard pertains to the entirety of the watch and is even more exacting on multiple levels than the COSC chronometer standard. So this Metaz will conform to chronometer tests, but it will also exceed them. Now, the watch features the usual functions that we've come to know on the Silicon Hairspring SI148500, so amagnetic, robustly resistant to magnetism. It also features a dual anchored balance bridge with a free sprung balance for resistance to shock induced timing deviation. The balance beats away at the coaxial specific rate of 25,200 vibrations per hour and Twin mainspring barrels provide both an even release of torque over the full power reserve of the watch and a superior 60 hour power reserve outright. Of course, it is a chronometer and it is a coaxial, and this movement comes perhaps closest to realizing the accuracy and the long term stability that George Daniels originally envisioned for this alternative escapement technology. Now, you pull the crown to extremity, you do hack the balance, halt the seconds hand, you can synchronize to a reference time, push it back in or pull it to the intermediate position, now you have a time zone feature whereby you can advance the date, set your time zone forward or backward as you travel without affecting balance amplitude or isochronism. You'll note the watch continues to beat. This is a watch, quite frankly, that beats on every cylinder, like a V8 at full song. This is a great effort. This is a phenomenal experience. This is a watch that, while it took some time to reach market, was undoubtedly worth the wait. See it and purchase it on our website.